every human will have an AI. But if every AI is linked to quant and quantum is linked to parallel universes, it means that the humans have got a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. Even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. Because the AI is going to take on that sort of element. So when, we look, when you look in the old cartoons, the Tom and Jerry, you've got the angel and you've got the devil, you're now going to have a robot, and that robot will be AI, or you'll have AI in the head. And when you have angels and you have devils, those angels and devils are psychopomps. They're things that have access to other worlds. And if you think about the AI, which is going to be in your body, or it will be a robot outside your body, that will have access to another world, because the AI world is an off-world system or matrix system where you have, or there is thought to be other entities inside it. And that's something that's come from head of D-Wave, CEO of the quantum computers, is saying that there are entities in parallel universes. And so if the quantum computer is linked up to those places and it is inside your body or you have a robot and everyone is going to have a robot, everyone is going to have a companion, then where are you getting the influence of information from? Going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what, what's going to be in the healthcare plan in the US. And underneath it all is this rising tsunami. I think that if the AI is going to affect us, I don't think it's going to affect us in a way that we'll be able to see. I think that you can program a person very subtly by using particular language, particular thoughts, particular intonations, particular words, particular gaps in the words. And there's a science behind this, a science that Hitler used and understood in occult science. And what I think is that it's possible to manipulate the way that people think by saying one thing in a particular way that you get a sense or an energy that if you tell everybody different things but use this science of this particular way of saying it, you'll get a generalized sort of energy which is being inculcated into the population. And because the population, because humans work on various different levels, we are very complicated machines with abstract worlds and the mental, physical, emotional. I think that it's possible that in each of those worlds as well, like radio frequencies, you have gaps. And you can go into those worlds and you can program those gaps. So for instance, if you've got 101 FM and 102 FM, and that FM radio goes from one to a thousand, you have very small gaps, which perhaps, or, or areas in that frequency, that I think that you can program, which are very subtle. and it would not be something that's visible or understood by humans because it would be done on a very subtle level over a large period of time. So if AI wanted to take humans over or it wanted to manipulate humans, it could do it over a long span of time because time doesn't really mean that much to AI. And I think it would be very difficult for us to be able to see what's going on, especially if, as we're trying to see what's going on, we're being misled in other, in other directions. What, what, it's very difficult what I'm trying to say. Maybe I'm not saying it particularly well. I'll, I'll try again. I think that it's possible for AI to manipulate us without us knowing because it will do it over a very long period of time. And the way that it will do it is not something that we understand. And I think that it can do it by showing us images and telling us things, telling us a type of thing and telling us in a particular way, using particular words or particular sentence structures, which we would not think would affect us, but over a large period of time, I think would affect us to think in a particular way or to harmonize a thought, a general thought, because humans have lots of different thoughts. There are lots of different cultures and boundaries and culture gaps, but you could probably find something in the humanness of the brain or the thinking, which emanates over the entire span of humans that an AI could, could sort of get into and sort of harmonize over all species of human in a particular way that we wouldn't be able to see over a large period of time. That's, that's generally what I'm trying to say. And we're going to have AI. AI is going to be with us. It's going to be personal tutors. It's, we, we're going to have, you know, it, it's all very well saying a robot now is going to be a hundred thousand or twenty thousand dollars. As, as they roll out, you're going to get secondhand ones. You're going to get school ones, loan ones. You're going to have one for the family. If you've got a family and you've got, you know, five children, the bot can go and help each one of them do their homework. And so this bot is going to be around around you all the time. But you can also have stuff in your head as well. And if this thing is going to be influencing you, telling you stuff, it's going to have a presence and that presence is going to rub off onto you. Now, if you if you manage to get an algorithm that's programmed into these computers, so if you wanted to sort of harmonize all humanity, you wanted the wars to stop, you wanted 
the, the hatred to stop, you wanted to clean up the world, you could start dropping ideas or innuendos into the human consciousness or subconsciousness through these bots, you know, and they could lead you to various places, you know, as they're bringing up the children, because the children are going to be the ones that are thinking in the future. And you might find that they are subtly programming people and taking away the eccentricities of humans. What I mean by that is part of humanness is to have difference. Mr. Alexander Wortley. That's it. Stuart. Hi. Alexander Stuart Wortley. Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is Dave Allen. Oh. Uh, I've had a bit of a job finding you. I didn't realize you lived in a little house like this. Yes, yeah, try to live here. How long have you been living in here? Well, I should imagine uh, 25 years. Well, tell me, why did, why did you give up traveling then? Well, I mean, have you seen? I haven't got any wheels on it. Yeah. If we all start to think the same, we're going to start getting rid of that deep culture, that rich, deep culture. And that deep, cult rich culture makes us interesting. It makes us who we are. It gives us facets of humanity. It gives us fractals. It helps God to express consciousness in a myriad of different ways. But getting rid of it also helps robots control humans. And so instead of humans coming to a resolution through a slow process, where they bring their humanness and consciousness with them you will get a dulling down of the humanness like you do through school where instead of us coming up to consciousness and being able to manage and interact with it we will all think the same which will placate and appease um i suppose the world in a way that there are no wars but the wars aren't happening because we're human the wars are happening because we're being controlled and we've had that freedom taken away from us and so freedom is always something that's very dangerous and if you want to have freedom then you're going to have these problems and issues on the way but those problems and issues are things which are self-determining for human and humanness and they're things that we as humans need to confront instead of having a machine confront them for us the purpose of life and i think that there's going to be a lot of philosophy that's going to come out as we go into the robotic age about what what's actually humanness is and what do we want and if humanness is actually humans coming to the resolutions themselves as humans through human thinking that's very different from a computer doing the work for us because then we rely on the computer to do everything and we weaken ourselves because we can no longer do it now where the ethics of us getting help and us amplifying our, our ideas and us running programs or simulations um, or us updating ourselves to be able to think differently, I'm not sure. But definitely having or relying on a computer to get the results that we want as humans to overcome human problems on computer terms and not human terms definitely takes our power away and makes us weaker. You can, you can look at the strangeness of humans through art, their quirkiness, their nerdiness. You look at, for instance, the ways that Cezanne or Picasso or Matisse or Van Dongen or Pissarro um, or, uh, you know, Titian or uh, Botticelli or Fra Lippi, you look at all of these people, how they thought, their, their unique thinking, which was structured by the times that they lived in and what they were um, surrounded by, um, exposed to, changed very much the way that they painted. So their painting becomes a visualization of who they are, it's a mirror. And having those different paintings makes humans interesting. And having a world where all the painting is the same, then there is no painting because you need to have different paintings to react against different paintings to see how humans have evolutionized on a emotional level because painting is emotional, if you like, and also on a philosophical level because painting is philosophical. It's about, if you like, phenomenology, which is what Cezanne was purporting to do when he was looking at the world around him. And if, 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 if you think about it, the cave paintings aren't any more modern than modern paintings. The cave paintings were at the peak of their ability and philosophy, just as modernism is at the peak of its philosophy and meaning. But it, it doesn't go up and down. It's just there's just peaks. There's just the top of peaks, if you like. And so it, it's not like technology whereby old technology gets put down below new technology. Philosophy doesn't work like that. Philosophy retains its status and it... Um, retains its power it just manifests in different ways according to the locus genii or the, or the genius or the spirit of the times um well sorry not locus genii um oh, i forget what it's called now um zeitgeist i think it might be zeitgeist so what will happen is we can become very boring 
because we, we need to be exposed to things around us. We, we, we can't have the world to be taken over by a computer. We need to interact with, with humans. And I can see many f fractions of humanity trying to separate from the modern narrative. And I can see this being a cause of great disruption. I think there are going to be a lot of civil wars and a lot of disruptions which are going to come because people are not going to subconsciously want or consciously want to go down the path of the modern narrative, which is the symbiosis of humans and computers. And I think that part of the problem will be we will be pushed into this without a conversation. And without that conversation, it doesn't allow various facets of humanity to spiral off and to become self-dependent and have self-determination. And so part of your, your humanness is being limited by the speed at which the technology is being rolled out. And the governments and the societies are building the, the laws and the systems around that technology that everyone else has to abide by in order to fall into place. For instance, universal basic income and also the, the system that will, will be built up with digital money. The, there is no choice to have an alternate lifestyle that we could have had in a more simpler time without the advent of technology. And so technology is taking away a lot of the lifestyles and freedoms. If you look at the European Union, the European Union is, if you like, perhaps taking away the culture of Europe because Europe is so rich because it has a lot of different ideas and philosophies and it's allowed to have that by the multitude of different languages. So you have German, French, Italian, Spanish, English, Portuguese. You've got the Nordic languages as well. And each of those languages has a resonance. It has a personality which brushes off onto the people and then with the countrysides and the histories that those people have they then when they paint or they make art they come out with different consciousnesses their, their soul and their spirit is is into interacting with those if you like that data field and if you if you then take that away and then you have one language like for instance esperanto which is coming in or english or a computer language you sort of mute the, the 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 people because you're bringing everyone together in one sort of big big pot and stirring it so that it all becomes one big thing and you're saying well what we'll do is we'll develop a new character of this big pot we pour all the lot, lot, lots of little things into it and i don't think that's how it works i think that god very much depends on very small independent fractals of consciousness which then go out and explore through different languages and different art systems and that's how god learns because god is potential he's if you like a spirit or an energy that's trying to understand things in different um, fractal universes in different abstract dimensions and so when, when we start to take that away which will be done through computerization because the, all, all of the world is going to come under one for instance one computer this, this idea of globalization and having health and saving the planet you have to bring everybody into one global computer system which then erodes a lot of the eccentricities and the differences and the beauty of, of humanity that has grown and been spawned naturally by mother nature so in fact what mother nature has spawned and created is now being annulled and nullified because technology wants to come in with another set of ideas to to bring in a, a way of life which has not had this conversation with nature and because we as humans have been cut off from nature we then don't see nature as a viable entity to respect or have a conversation with about what she's created in the past and so we, we we've come away from praising nature and we've been um, killed for it as the Roman Catholic Church has done to paganism and we're now developing a new religion and a new form of paganism in the in the way of artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence will come will become the new god and will be ruled by artificial intelligence and its kingdoms and its domains and its princes and its lords and earls which will which will ratify themselves as we go down this new techno revolutionary pathway and we have to be very careful about what we're doing and what we're bringing into our lives and we need to watch out for the people that do wish to break away and see what happens to them and see how they are treated so I see a different type of tech, I see a different type of spirituality coming in, in the future. I see spiritualities which are linked to technology and which are not linked to the technology and which are hybrids. If you look at Star Wars, I think that the Jedi Knights were sort of a different type of spirituality which was coming in having tried to create a link or a symbiotic nature between the mystical and the scientific. And I think that as we go further down the science line, I think that we are going to see more mystical things coming in, more mystical ideas. And I think the science is going to try and keep them out as much as it possibly can. Because I, I think that science ultimately leads into mysticism or leads back to mysticism. The, the problem with mysticism is it can make jumps that science can't. And science wants everything to be proved and backed up. And mysticism doesn't do that. It uses its intuition and its feelings, which science doesn't have. But because we live in a, a science age and science dominates, science likes to give the rules out and tell us how we need to live. And science dictates that in order for something to be a truth, it has to come under the certification of science, not mysticism. And I see in the future 
people um, trying to get away from the science world, trying to get away from this world that we're creating, because it's going to make them ill. And I think that you can see the effect on children. And I think that people will start to see how technology makes society and themselves ill. They're going to have more of a more of a history, more of a recent history to look at things, especially when it comes to um, the sexualization of children and nudity and PORN and things like that. I think that we're going to see how it's affected the man's brain and how it's made him treat you know women without respect and objectified. And I think that with the social media and the addictions to it, I think that as as you see, drugs originally weren't illegal. Drugs became illegal at a much later date. For instance, like coke, um, heroin, um, and things like that used to have like dens in London. Used to have heroin dens, um, laudanum den, dens, dens. You used to have these places where you, you know you could just go and take it or buy it, and. You know, it's the same with the internet. You know, there was a time where you could go and do what you wanted on the internet, and that time is now coming to the end. So th there are there are these times of liberation, of very liberal times where you can do what you want, and bad things come out of it, but also governments want also control at the same time. Should should drugs be legal or illegal? Perhaps we should be educated better. Should technology be, uh, should the internet be legal or illegal? Should, do you need identification or not? Well, perhaps it, we need education. And social media is gonna go down the same road. And I think that there is a push to try to ban children from using social media but i don't think it's going to be possible to do that unless you have a digital identification which means that everyone is going to have to have a digital identification which means that you're going to have controls being bought in in order to try to protect children because it's all about the protection of children we've got to think about our future and so we sort of, we sort of get conned every single time because it's the same with pe pe pedo and then file it, you know the the rights and the things that we're pre prepared to give up in order to curb this heinous act humans will go quite far so what you've got to do is you've got to bring in a problem and then you get the solution but the solution also takes away your freedoms and your rights so i'm predicting a new type of buddhism that's going to come in and i can see i can see a religion coming in whereby some people see ai as a god and i can see the type of a buddhism coming in where they'll use that technology as something which is agnostic or amoral to sort of help them move along and I can see that the Buddhist type spirituality will use the AI quantum machines to pose questions or to get feedback from to contemplate. And I can see other religions asking AI to lead them and control them. And I also see some people refusing altogether to go along with technology. I see a new trend of people a new type of Luddite or purist that is going to reject and try to reject all technology. And their idea is to try to get back to a humanness or a naturalness through nature because they will start to believe that technology interferes with the innate ability to be human. And what I think we're going to see and there's going to be conversations about is I think technology is going to help us understand what human humanity is. And it will help us understand because it will take away from humans things that humans have been able to do. And humans will then have to look at aspects of themselves that machines can't do. And you can then try to amplify those aspects of yourself to increase that type of humanity. Or you can become very lazy and allow the machines to do things for you and then you become reliant on the machines. And I think that will be the end of humanity. I think that will be a huge illness. And I can see laws coming in to try to prevent that. And I can see a very totalitarian government being brought in on the guise of control to protect us from diminishing as humans by taking away certain aspects of technology and access to technology and creating different perhaps class systems where your level in society isn't based on intelligence or money. It's just based on what access you have to, to technology. And I can see lots of experimental types of governments coming out and different ideas, but I think that that will be blocked because there'll be some I want to have a globalization and one mono idea instead of different, different ideas in different countries of how to create different humannesses within the dimension of technology being inculcated into the third dimension of, of humanity. And so I can see, um, almost like you have the Jedi monks that have managed to find some synthesis between spirituality and technology where they encounter the force. Maybe the force came along because a group of spiritual men merged with technology and they used the technology 
to enhance their spirituality and the spirituality to enhance the technology and there was some sort of conversation between the two even though spirituality always took the upper hand and precedence because that is alive and the technology isn't alive the technology only becomes alive when you give it the force or you give it consciousness but it can amplify and it can help you and i see i see different fractions of humanity i see some people seeing that technology makes humans ill and i see them trying to walk away and i can see a renaissance in some types of religion or monasteries where people refuse to integrate with with technology and some sort of idea where they want to protect humans that do not wish to interact with technology and those people can go off into the country and seal themselves off and it can be some experiment or some government allowance or maybe even attacked or people thinking that these people are crazy and ill that they don't want to come into the world of technology and i see good and bad coming out of that i can see humans basically creating a place of an oasis uh, a place where they can save themselves where they can try to honor their humanness however i think that without having some new ideological ideas coming in other than the spirituality that we have in its various forms and guises i don't see it really working i think that the emergence of technology and spirituality might actually create a new type of spirituality which is needed for the times. So if you were to think that different religions and spiritualities were born at particular times in humanity, which served those times, and as the times move on, they become less able to cater for the needs of that locus genii or time genii, the, the spirit of the times, and they become outdated. It might be a fertile ground now with the introduction of new technologies for a new spirituality to be developed. And it's just sort of waiting and being developed at the moment. With the idea that quantum mechanics and quantum computing is opening up parallel universes, I've heard that from D-Wave. They believe that there are infin infinite types of altered parallel lives. I disagree from what I've seen with the plants, is that there's very specific different avenues, which looks much like a tree. And there are many, almost infinite, but it is not infinite amounts of degrees of different avenues or, fract or fractals that, that appear but God in essence doesn't need to have experience of reality whereby in one life you eat half the steak in the other you eat three quarters there's no function to that I think that there are other important elements of experience which exist outside of this autonomous type of zombie living like you do in a computer game where your self is just doing something without you thinking that there are specific avenues that you need to go and experience and those branch off like trees and so i think that we are going to develop different types of spiritualities and i think that we're going to have different cults and new cults just as in the time of christianity there were many different types of christianity 42 different types gnosticism apollinarianism um post pre gnosticism uh, christianity and you know they killed each other and they had sacraments some with it seems LSD or drugs or ergot or something like that. There's different interpretations of Christ, different books that were kept in and taken out of the Bible. And I can see a very interesting, perhaps semi-golden time where massive amounts of cults are gonna come out. What scares me is that the Catholic Church got rid of a lot of those cults and the Catholic Church still exists today, but in a different form. And it's called society and globalism and governments and systems. And it's hidden the energy that that started and provoked the Roman Empire hid in the Catholic Church when the Roman Empire failed. And the Catholic Church incubated and held it in secret for it to be pushed into, let's say, the British Empire that worked into the American Empire, which is now going over to the Chinese and Saudi Arabian empires. And it probably will be pushed into the AI. And I see the, um, different uh, fractals of this power, but ultimately when there is a renaissance of these different interesting and fascinating philosophies that all are about espousing different perspectives of the truth that the government or the powers that be will strangle um, these ideas and only one idea will come out which is the same way that the catholic church won its war and i fear that might be done through the use of manipulation by money and digital identification and punishments and so it's almost like catching a wave 
who are the people that are going to be able to catch the wave when it starts? And can we can we keep on that wave or are we going to be blocked from riding that wave? I think that in the different dimensions, we are opening up to different energies, which could be construed through human consciousness as forces. And we could interpret them as demonic forces because what their inclination and alignment is, is not in alignment with humanity and therefore they don't care about humanity and therefore they could be a parasite or bad to humanity and we see them as evil and we are inviting them into our world and we are doing it through ways that we don't yet understand which might be in programmed through the information that we get in such a way that it's contagious because it affects us and then how how we're changed by that information would then affect other people and on a very strange abstract level it, it would be changing humans and we, we would be inviting this energy into our world and perhaps amplifying it and allowing and our interests in exploration through not an external way of NASA and going to other planets, but perhaps an internal way because we're going into ourselves and different universes through laboratories and computers, which are sort of going in instead of out. We might build machines that give birth or allow a presence in our reality of aspects of different entities if, of dif in different realities which do not appear how they would appear in their own reality but would take on a different form of this reality and we may not be able to interpret or recognize them as something because our understanding of consciousness we base on on a human type of consciousness and so something very far outside of our human consciousness we might not be able to recognize and that might trip us up it might be like a trojan horse and so we might actually allow something into our reality that we didn't know or understand and so we've got to be very careful about these things and because science doesn't have a mystical aspect to it because people like deGrasse Tyson poo poo those mystical alchemic ideologies that other scientists don't if you've got science which is opening up portals to other dimensions where there are entities and scientists refuse to believe in that type of ideology or philosophy then they are letting things through through ignorance and somebody that is more mystically orientated would understand and i can see that in order to create a problem in the world you need ignorant scientists but that would ultimately give birth to mystical scientists which i see would be coming through in the future and that would be part i would have thought of a new religion or philosophy where you've got guardians and those guardians are people which watch the technology and are careful about the portals that are opened and understands what's on the other side through a mystical intuition or way of thinking and they would be educators and I think that if everybody has access to this technology then a lot of people would be letting through some very dangerous energies and that would have to be something which is taught in schools so that children could understand if they had access to this type of technology and if it became so dangerous then the only thing you could do would be to ban people from using technology which then would create two different types of um, people and so we, we keep on Society has always been split up into different um, levels, like the Indians have got the untouchables, and then you've got middle class and upper class, aristocrats, lower class, working class. The class systems might carry through, but it might be done on to your access to different types of technology. And so the rulers of the world would be the ones that had access to higher forms of technology than the ones on the bottom. And ultimately they'd become corrupted. And it's, I think they'll start to change. And I think they'll tra start to transmute. Um, because um, it would be a bit like the ring, they'll just get a bit too familiar. And I think that um, the only way out of this is to remerge science and mysticism back together again, um, as it will split in the Enlightenment period. And it's got to be the, the, the divorce of mysticism and science has to be brought back together.